Hello everyone, Alex will be made up here. Today we're going to talk about how to calculate and size domestic water systems in Revit MEP. I'm going to show you how Revit calculates GPM for, this is exclusively for domestic water. So domestic cold water systems and domestic hot water systems. We're going to brush on fixture units versus GPM. I'm going to show you how Revit calculations are based out of the International Building Code on which you have a section for predominantly tank type systems or predominantly flushometer valve systems. Uh, we're going to talk a little bit about the Hunter's Curve. I'm going to give you some basics on pipe sizing based on the fluid's velocity. And finally, we're going to use Revit to size some piping. Ready? See you in Revit. And before we even start, think about it, it makes sense. If you like this kind of content, then make sure you subscribe to the channel. You hit that bell so you get notifications. You don't miss any of our videos. Okay, so what I have here is a small system that I set up to do a software validation on how Revit calculates GPM for domestic cold and hot water systems. So what that is, is if you see this piping here is feeding these connectors, right? And for example, this connector here in the corner is five cold water fixture units, right? And the way I set it up is the first one is five fixture units, and then all the others are 10 fixture units, right? 10, 10, 10, and so on. And as you can see, Revit is pretty smart as far as keeping track of the fixture units. See, this one is reading five fixture units, then it encounters 10 more, that's 15, 10 more, that's 25, and so on. And that's pretty straightforward. But now I'm gonna change my tag here to another tag that I created that is uh, displaying GPM. And this is really what I wanna focus on today. Uh, you can see that the, the relationship here it's not linear, so I'm gonna take this other tag here and I'll change it to GPM as well. So this is 15 fixture units and this is 25, it's almost twice. Why is the GPM staying so close to the previous one? So for that, let's, let's dig in and let's go into manage and let's go here under MEP settings and under mechanical settings, you'll find calculations, right? I'm going to disregard this for hydronic networks, pressure drop. It's actually pretty cool that you can change from the Colebrook equation to the Hallen equation. I'm going to keep it in there. I'm going to keep it under Colebrook. And this is what we want to focus on, flow. And this is applicable exclusively to domestic water systems. And if we go down here, we can read that this method converts from fixture units to volumetric flow using values found in the 2012 International Plumbing Code, IPC, table E103.33. So I have the International Plumbing Code right here. And here you can clearly see that disparity. See, for you have two columns. One of them is for predominantly flush tanks and another one is for flushometer valves. Okay, so you can see that disparity right here. So if you have 20 fixture units, you have 19.6 GPM. But then if you double the fixture units to 40, you only get 26.3 GPM as opposed to getting double the GPM. And you find a similar condition for flushometer valves. For 20 fixture units, you get 35 GPM. And then for 40 fixture units, you only get 46 GPM. See, so from 20 to 40, you're doubling the fixture units. You're definitely not doubling the GPM from 35 to 46. And this is because the fixture unit concept takes into account the likelihood that not all fixtures will be used at the same time, which is called diversity. And we go in depth into that. This is all coming out of the hunter's table. It's a statistical study that was done many years ago. And if you want to go in detail and really understand what's going on in there, uh, you can definitely book some formal beam it up training session on this. 
but going back to our exercise here, um, I just want to show you guys where, where this can be found. So that's how Revit is calculating this, right? So let's dive in a little bit. And for that, we're going to go all the way down to our families. And then under piping systems, I will find my water, domestic cold water system. And under type properties, you'll find what you have selected. In this case, I have flow conversion method being equal to predominantly flush valves. See how you can change it here from flush tanks to flush valves. And those are those two columns that we just saw, flush tanks and flushometer valves. So for this validation, I want to make sure that Revit is properly calculating the flush valve option. So I'm going to keep it like this and I hit OK. So just to follow up on this, I'm going to change all these tags right here. I'm going to use my little filter here. Check none. Just want the tags. I'm going to change them all to the one that displays GPM. All right. So Let's see what's going on here. So I'm going to bring into the screen the Alex plumbing notes here. And just a quick reminder that whenever you have the flow and you set a certain velocity, you can determine the area. And with that area, you obviously know the diameter. And we go in depth into that in the BIM it up training sessions. But for this exercise, we know that if you have the GPM, and you set a maximum velocity, then you can calculate your pipe size. And if I bring my cheat sheet to the other side of the screen, then you can tell that, you know, this, this piece of pipe, for example, is running 25 fixture units, 38 GPM. So 25 fixture unit, 38 GPM, that's pretty good. Then you have 35 fixture unit, 44 GPM, 35 fixture unit, 44 GPM. So that seems pretty consistent with uh, what I've been studying all these years, right? So I can trust Revit. Let me go a little bit lower here and let's go into the larger GPM here to see if it remains. So 75 fixture units, 60 GPM. Let's see, 75, well, it's somewhere around here. So it should be somewhere around 60 GPM. So it's pretty good between 58 and 61. And you know, this I developed a long time ago based on a maximum velocity of five feet per second. And this is for copper K, but copper L is pretty similar. So we're good with the GPM side of things. How do we size this system? We simply hover over the system, tab select until we have the whole piping selected. And then under the piping systems ribbon, you go under duct pipe sizing tool and then for now, let's keep it five feet per second and let's hit OK. We go in detail into each one of these parameters in our training sessions. But for now, let's just click OK. And then you can see that Revit has automatically sized all this piping based on our criteria. So for 15 GPM, you require a one and a quarter inch pipe size. That's pretty conservative. And then it jumps to like in 31 GPM, it jumps to a diameter of two inches and then maybe changes again. Yeah, here for 52 GPM, I'm already requiring a two and a half inch pipe size. So again, that's pretty conservative. Let's see 52 GPM. If I were using my, my old little cheat sheet, uh, 52 GPM, it would be somewhere around here. So 52 GPM, maybe I could handle it with a two inch pipe size. So this is already pretty conservative. So it's great for a first pass and you would be on the safe side. Now, if you're serious about your professional training, go ahead and visit us at beamitup.com. At beamitup.com, we offer professional training on mechanical, electrical, plumbing, and fire protection systems. And we can also train you obviously in Autodesk platforms like Revit and AutoCAD MEP. So go ahead and visit us at beamitup.com or contact us directly at the email you see on the screen and let us know how we can help you get professionally developed. 
And as always, if you enjoyed the video, make sure you smash that like button down there, subscribe to the channel, hit that bell so you get notified. Thank you for watching and see you on the next video.